we'll have a look at the conformational analysis of disubstituted cyclohexanes. In this video, we'll be particularly discussing about 1,1 disubstituted cyclohexanes. Now, when we take up disubstituted cyclohexanes in general, we can have uh, four different classes of compounds. That is, we can have 1,1 one, one disubstituted cyclohexane. We can have wherein uh, both the substituents are on the same carbon. We can have 1,2 disubstituted cyclohexane, wherein the substituents are present on the first and second carbon. We can have 1,3 uh, disubstituted cyclohexane, wherein the first and the third carbon has the substituents and finally we can have 1,4 disubstituted cyclohexanes. Alright, now uh, we will be taking up the first class that is the 1,1 disubstituted cyclohexane. Now, now let us take up that when uh, we have the 1,1 disubstituted cyclohexane and we know that cyclohexane prefers to take up the chair conformation. We have uh, discussed in detail uh, why cyclohexane prefers chain conformation. You have seen the energy etc. Okay and uh, here both the substituents are on the same carbon and uh, I have put it as x and y just to indicate that both the substituents are different. Now here uh, x is in the axial position and uh, y occupies the equatorial position. We can have the other possibility also that is y in the axial position and x in the equatorial position. Alright. Now, uh, uh, when we flip this, now which one, I mean before flipping, which uh, one occupies the equatorial or axial, whether it is x and y, we have to decide or which is energetically more stable. Now, when you flip the first case wherein x is in the axial, you get x in the equatorial position and y in the axial position. Now this flipped chair conformer and the second conformer which we had seen, both of them are almost similar. In both y is in the axial position and x is in the equatorial position. But there is a slight difference in the sense in this uh, in this case that is in wherein the, uh, after the chair conformer which we got after flipping x has the x is uh, the in the beta uh, orientation and y is in the uh, alpha orientation but here uh, in the second case here the y is in the beta orientation and x is in the alpha orientation now that's the difference sorry y is in the uh, uh, beta orientation and x is in the alpha uh, alpha orientation now, if we flip the second one, again, what we get, we get a conformer wherein x is in the axial position and y is in the equatorial position, which is again similar to the first case, but then yeah, there is a difference in the alpha and beta. Now, which is energetically more stable, whether it is the first case or the second case. Now, that, that depends on the size of x and y. That is, usually it is seen that if uh, the uh, x or if the substituent is larger, it prefers to occupy the equatorial position. So if here x is a bulkier group, then this particular conformer will be more stable, wherein x is in the equatorial position. If y is bulky, then the first conformer will be more stable. Now that is because in order to avoid the 1,3 diaxial interaction, we have seen in detail about 1,3 diaxial interaction. So larger group occupies equatorial position in order to avoid the 1,3 diaxial interaction. You can explain it in terms of our uh, butane units also because in equatorial position you get two uh, anti gotch I mean anti butane units also. Okay, so using that and the diaxial interaction, we can explain why larger groups prefer to occupy the equatorial position. As an example, we have methyl and ethyl group as a substituent. And if we flip this, you get ethyl in the axial and methyl in the equatorial. It will be 
see i mean we can see that ethyl group in the equatorial uh, position that conformer is more stable so the first conformer which we have written will be more stable same is the case if we have an isopropyl group along with methyl group okay isopropyl group prefers to occupy the equatorial position now we have seen this when we had discussed about mono substituted cyclohexane that uh, bulky groups uh, they become the anchoring group that is they fix a particular conformer isn't it the molecule becomes rigid they will not be uh, they are not all allowing flipping particularly tertiary butyl group it prefers to occupy or it always occupies the equatorial position okay even isopropyl group also prefers to occupy the equatorial position so bulkier the group the group tends to occupy the equatorial position in order to avoid the one three dioxane interaction now we have another example here we have methyl and phenyl group of the substituents so in, uh, i have written here methyl in the axial position and phenyl in the equatorial position okay now when you flip it what happens phenyl goes to the axial position methyl goes to the equatorial position now it's seen that we expect i mean we expect phenyl to be in the equatorial position because phenyl is bulkier than methyl but it has been observed that phenyl group prefers to occupy the axial position okay now why is that so we need to see now, when we take the phenyl, I mean uh, the uh, chair conformer, that is when phenyl is in the axial position. Uh, uh, before that, we need to know that when methyl group is in the axial position, it will experience one three diaxial interaction, and when phenyl group is in the axial position, it will also experience one three diaxial interaction. Now to say which is more stable, which particular conformer is more stable, we need to say uh, which one three dioxyl interaction contributes more to the energy. Whether it is the one, uh, one three dioxyl interaction associated with methyl group or one three dioxyl associated with phenyl group. Whichever contributes more energy that will be less stable, right? Now, when you write the uh, chair conformer wherein the phenyl group is in the axial position, you can, uh, if you write like this, uh, the phenyl group can have interaction with the axial hydrogen of uh, this carbon and this carbon, isn't it? If you put this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So, this carbon also can also interact and this carbon also can interact with this hydrogen. Right? So, one three dioxyl interaction is possible. In the case of phenyl group, there is a possibility that it can rotate. In the sense, if we, uh, if, uh, uh, the, if we rotate this uh, phenyl group, the carbon phenyl group in this direction, see, like this. Okay? So, what happens? You get uh, uh, the the, the phenyl ring uh, rotates in such a way that this this dark bond start uh, will be facing us right like this so the hydrogen atom attached to this will be away from the uh, axial hydrogen atoms so the the interaction will be less okay so uh, the phenyl group can avoid the interaction one three dioxyl interaction by rotating the <clears throat> C-phenyl bond. Okay, so if it rotates, it can uh, keep its hydrogen away from the diaxial hydrogen. Okay, and hence we can say that the uh, diaxial interaction in, uh, when phenyl is in the axial position is less when compared to the diaxial interaction when methyl is in the axial position. Now, methyl is a... Uh, uh, what we call a uh, sp3 hybridized carbon it will be having tetrahedral geometry so these three hydrogen groups attached to methyl group will be anyway interacting with hydrogen however how much ever we rotate this cma bond okay but here in the phenyl group it is not so we can take the hydrogen away from by from interaction by rotating the cph bond now let us see what happens when the phenyl group is in the 
equatorial position. Now, when the phenyl group is in the equatorial position, you have there are two ortho hydrogens on the phenyl ring. This phenyl, this hydrogen can inter, will be interacting with the methyl hydrogens, and the other ortho hydrogen will be interacting with the equatorial hydrogen of the cyclohexane. Okay, now. Uh, so here also we can try to rotate this okay in order to avoid the uh, what we call the interaction so if suppose in order to avoid this CH interaction I mean uh, HH interaction we are rotating it okay in this direction okay now what happens what will we get we will get such a confirmer that is we have rotated and the uh, this bond, the darker bond, has come up. But what's there? Again, the, 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 there is ortho interaction, isn't it, with the methyl group? The ortho hydrogen on this carbon is now interacting with the methyl group, and the other ortho hydrogen is interacting with the equatorial hydrogen. So we can say that when the phenyl ring is in the uh, equatorial position, there is a lot of interaction. The phenyl ring hydrogen interacts with methyl group as well as the equatorial hydrogen group. Okay, so it's preferred that phenyl ring better go to the axial position. And hence, even though phenyl ring is a bulky, a bulky group, it prefers the axial position when, compa when compared to the equatorial position. Okay, so that's the case of uh, uh, one one disubstituted cyclohexane. Hope it's been clear to you. Please draw the structures and make yourself thorough. Thank you.